What is the downside of being the smart kid? Not many people realize. The pressure to be perfect, but later in life, a lack of motivation, burnout. I burned out my sophomore year of college, switched majors and recovered okay. But now at work, there are more people who refer to me as the guru or expert. Every time I try to downplay that hype, because most days it's all I can do to show up and I don't want all that added pressure. My one cousin was always in the gifted classes, always had A's, got a great score on her ACT, but at the last minute opted out of college and went to Paul Mitchell to learn to do hair. She now styles hair, does makeup, is still super artistic, and runs an Instagram for her animals. As she said, she got tired of being expected to perform at a certain level, to keep from disappointing people, and decided to do what gave her freedom, to create and make money. Damn, this hits too close to home. Finished a law degree, but could it scrape together any energy to go through another year of education to qualify as a lawyer? Like, all I want to do now is just hang back, enjoy my freedom, and when I'm off from work, to catch up on video games I missed out as a kid. To not think about dealing with another expectation my parents set on me, plus I have no idea how to study the subject other than regurgitate from notes purchased from other students. Because you expect to thrive at everything you do, and never develop the skills to actually develop skills you are not inherently good at. So much this. In the years where you learn and develop a worth ethic, if everything comes too easy to you and then you don't develop a good one, it is really hard to do it in later life. You will eventually get to the point where you will try to do something that is hard and doesn't come out easily and you will just quit. The imposter syndrome that comes with you as you get older. The lack of self-appreciation when you're the smart kid and any other talents get pushed aside. The crippling anxiety you get when you score low, at least to you and exams in college because you're smart and clearly something is wrong with you if you're struggling now. And people are so quick to jump on you if you struggle in some course because you're smart and this should be easy. So they don't provide extra help and claim it's because you aren't trying hard enough, which compounds your anxiety slash depression and increases your negative thoughts about yourself. This could be the result of poor parenting, but these have hit me so damn hard as a child. I'm 30 now and I still struggle because I have had my intelligence touted my whole damn life. I'm a former smart kid and now a middle-aged translator. It drives me crazy and really hurts my self-esteem when I can't understand something or make a mistake in translation. I'm supposed to be good at this, damn it. What's wrong with me? It really eats into the core of my identity. In contrast, I started doing yoga about 18 months ago. I'd never been very athletic and had never done anything to improve my strength or flexibility. So I didn't expect to be good at yoga and figured I would just do whatever I could. So it doesn't bother me at all when I struggle with yoga. And if I can't do a pose quite right or can't even begin to get into a more complicated pose, that's fine. Because after all, no one could expect me to be good at yoga. It's so nice to feel you can make a mistake and it doesn't really matter. And I wish I could achieve that attitude with my intelligence as well. Neurologic conditions like ADHD and or ASD aren't noticed and you gaslight yourself into thinking you're lazy or worse, even though you have massive anxiety about being lazy or a bad person, something actually lazy people don't have. Oh God, the amount of times I heard, you're so smart, if only you do your homework, you'd get straight A's, just made me feel more broken. My mom always acknowledged that I had ADD, but never took me to get anything done for it. So I just kept getting shamed and not being able to do my math homework. I liken trying to do homework with ADD to try starting my car when the starter is bad. You go to start the car and you know it's so close to starting. And if you could just get it to turn over once, you'd be fine. With homework, you see the math problem. That was always my weakness, math homework. You know exactly what equation it goes into and you're well aware of how to do the equation, but just can't focus long enough to plug the numbers into an equation. They just slip away and you can't go anywhere. It's incredibly frustrating and takes monumental effort to focus long enough to do one problem. Then your parents act like if you'd stop being so fucking lazy and just do the homework, everything would be fine. When school is easy, you don't learn to work hard, which is a big part of school. At the end of the day, it's not the smartest kid that gets the college degree and the good job, it's the one with more drive. Living up to early expectations placed on you. 
and not receiving the same level of praise for meeting those expectations as someone else would. If someone usually works at a C, B level, it's a big deal if they manage to get an A. The smart kids straight A's just don't get congratulated the same way, because all they have done is what was expected, while getting less than an A is met with disappointment. It sounds petty, but it matters as a kid. It's hard to feel like you're doing well when the other kids are getting praise for objectively worse achievements. Perfectionism. I've worked with a lot of recent college grads. The ones with good GPAs thrive. The ones with perfect GPAs struggle. Why? Because the kid with A's and B's understand how to focus their effort, and when something is good enough, the straight A students expect perfection, and that's not possible with deadlines. In the work world, a good product delivered on time is better than a perfect product that's not delivered at all. The perfectionism also aren't good at receiving critical feedback. Everyone asks, how'd the smart kid do? But never, how's the smart kid doing? I felt this so hard. I've played violin since I was nine and my parents and teachers very early on realized that I was talented beyond what was normal for my age and I could go far and make a lot of money, AKA garner attention won awards for my high school, and make our fine arts program look great. They put an immense amount of pressure on me, threw me into all kind of pretentious concerto competitions, sent me on gigs and auditions for prestigious awards that I didn't give a shit about, and naturally, because I didn't want to do any of these things, I sabotaged. Showed up late, missed auditions, missed deadlines, wouldn't practice, etc. And was subsequently told in so many ways how I failed and disappointed everyone, no one ever once asked me what I wanted or how I felt, and I definitely grew up feeling as though my worth and value was only attached to my violin or being really smart. Fast forward a few years, and I dropped out of college, pursuing a violin performance degree, because I couldn't handle the pressure and lack of autonomy anymore, and began to spiraling into a crippling depression. I don't even play my piano anymore, which sucks because I love it more than anything, but I still haven't healed from a lot of the trauma and don't feel safe playing. I'd love to be able to play with a symphony orchestra again and feel whole. I spend most of my time feeling depressed and like I failed everyone, but I'm healing as best as I can and understanding that it wasn't my fault and my entire being was ultimately sacrificed so that parents and teachers could live vicariously through me. Still to this day, no one has asked me how I'm doing or how that experience affected me. If only I could have just been a normal kid and not the oldest child. Adults will encourage you and very specifically, not your less gifted peers. To engage in critical thinking, to question, and then when you get older, absolutely no one will ever want you to do that. I think this is part of why a lot of smart kids end up with anxiety and depression, especially as adults. You notice earlier than your peers just how messed up the world is, but still have to live in it. The expectation to be smart at all times. When the time comes that you fail, you just feel so much like a disappointment when you're smart, you're expected to succeed. Success is normal. It is not praiseworthy, no matter how well you do. It's just because you're smart. Of course you do very well. You just end up with a lack of pride or confidence in your skills and an excessive fear of failure. People don't realize you're struggling in other areas of life. By kid, I'm thinking of a kid in school. So often, poor grades are an indication that something bad is going on in the kid's life. If the kid is smart and does well because that's who they are, then it's a lot less likely in my opinion that someone else notices something ain't right. Being accused of thinking you're better than everyone else, being incredibly bored in classes you're good at, needing to change the vocabulary you're using around your peers to avoid being made fun of or being misunderstood, that soul crushing panic whenever things start to go wrong in school, feeling disappointed in adults when they say or do very stupid things. Smart kids will peak earlier and then not know what to do with themselves. Sort of like young athletes, you make it to the top young and then they're left sort of floundering after success. From personal experience, I was always regarded as the golden child or the girl genius. I ruined my sleep schedule because of all the extra work and studying I would do. I had several panic attacks because of school and at the age of 13, I had a mental breakdown because of an existential crisis where I realized nothing I did would ever matter. And to top it all off, I have crippling fear of failing. Everything being easy has a lot of repercussions in the long run. No study skills, procrastination, weakened drive, 
and a lot of other bad habits build up. And when you do fail at something, or even encounter a real challenge, it hits a lot harder. I pretty easily breeze through everything until my master's program. Master's level macroeconomics, econ metrics, and mathematical economics were really challenging, and I had no idea how to study. I studied as best as I could, but it was so stressful, I wound up almost in panic mode. The nights before exams, I really had no idea if I was even studying properly. It's really easy to wind up with depression, anxiety, and other issues later in life, especially if you're also ADD slash ADHD. Work ethic and social skills will get you hell of a lot farther in life than intelligence will. You either break or you get exhausted by expectations from others. The break is similar to a burnout, but a lot more destructive and without any recovery. The exhaustion is when you gradually get worse until no one expects something from you while constantly being insufficiently challenged from dying inside from day to day. At some point, you will be a doomer. Being smart feels great, especially since you get tons of compliments for it. Unfortunately, this means you become somewhat reliant on it as a trait. When you are placed among other similarly smart people, you must maintain your status as the best or at least be in the ballpark. This means that you end up doing a whole lot of work you really don't want to do, although it feels worth it when you prove yourself to once again be better than your peers. Sure, you could just accept that there is always someone who is going to be better, but then you fade into mediocrity and miss out on a lot of the attention you previously got. Oh boy, I have so much to say about this. The biggest downside, growing up, is how much pressure everyone puts on you. Teachers, parents, and everyone else with so many expectations, sometimes people take your words so seriously and look to you for advice about things. And when you don't know the answer to something, the disappointment is very palpable. You remember so much insignificant stuff that people get offended when you forget something about them. The biggest disadvantage, however, is how you become completely dependent on your cognitive skills to function in life. I took a high dose of moxifloxacin three days ago, and it gave me an extreme brain fog. It was taking me half an hour to read five pages when I can easily read a book in a day. The fog has cleared up a little today, but the past couple days were hellish. I realized how much I rely on my memory for everything and how difficult life was without it. I had to set alarms and reminders for meetings. I had to take notes for lectures. I had to read things twice or thrice to comprehend them. I have a completely new appreciation for people who have memory and attention problems now. No one takes the time to realize you may not be okay, might not have things together. There are issues you need help with, or there are things you are missing out on being educated on. My own family seemed to figure that because I was a smart kid who experimented with and figured things out quickly, understood most topics and the logic behind them, etc. That I would be fine in life and did not need to be directly educated about the finer points of being a human being within society. As a result, most of my time since exiting the family home has been spent learning all the finer points in life and how to be a human people see and recognize as one of them instead of someone that alarms or concerns people. I blend in way better now and am able to be comfortable around people since I don't make them so immediately distressed with my presence. On the opposite side of not having to work hard is me. I got noticed as smart, very young, and I had tons of challenging opportunities placed in front of me, extracurriculars, high level classes. I found out that if I had taken one more AP class, I would have been forced to enter college as a sophomore because I had so much college credit. And then in college, I had challenging classes and personal attention from professors. I loved it and loved expanding my brain. And then I graduated and no one was putting challenges in front of me anymore. And I didn't know what to do to challenge myself. I didn't know what I was passionate about. I didn't know what to do next. I found zero drive to do anything. Now when life tosses me one way or another, I can rise to the occasion. But I feel really out of control as to my own direction. The fall from grace. You can't make mistakes because you're the smart one. If a stupid kid says something stupid, that's normal. People will chuckle and move on. If the smart kid gets a question wrong or says something stupid, that's an event because they're smart. How could they do something stupid? It'll get brought up in all kinds of situations from people seeing behind the curtain. See, I knew you weren't as smart as everyone says you are. 
to dismissing any other ideas you might have. XYZ idea was stupid, why would ABC be any better? Did you even think last time? How can we trust you now? It's exhausting. Everything is usually on easy mode, so whenever something is hard, you have a lot tougher time not giving up, since you aren't used to challenges. Of course, this does not apply to smart kids that work their asses off to get the results they have. I'm talking about the smart kid who does nothing and gets perfect grades. They're so used to everything being easy, the day it gets tough, they won't know what to do. The lack of support from jealous peers. Even the ones that are your friends. No one to celebrate victories with, like a good grade, because you'll do well anyway. Even when you worked hard to get that grade. Often pressure from parents to be perfect and harsh judgment or punishment if you're not. You're expected to get all the highest grades because your targets are ludicrously high and you're expected to do better. You're not necessarily in the position where a pass grade is good enough, rather, you're expected to see it as a failure if you don't achieve the top grades. Lots of pressure on yourself. However much you know that you'll ace it. Depression early in life because no structure supports the smart kids and not progressing at your own pace mentally for years on end fucks you up. Then lack of motivation, struggle when facing the smallest obstacle because it's the first time in your life something is hard. Utter fucking boredom in high school most of the time. When the teacher is explaining a basic concept for the fifth time to the dumbasses who can't pay attention and you've already completed the homework she assigned and you're bored as fuck sitting in class waiting for the goddamn bell to ring just so you can go on to the next class of the day and repeat the same stupid shit five more times over the course of the day. Don't worry smart kids, it gets better in college, especially when you're past the 100 level courses. Every smart character in kids TV shows and such is smarter than all the scientists in the real world, so you don't really see yourself on TV. You get the Mary Sue with the same label as you. Even the smartest kids never get close to that level. Realizing you're not that smart, just really good at maybe a couple skills or concepts other people struggle with. For me, it's critical thinking and leadership skills. Made me feel like the top of my whole class, my whole life since I learned pretty quickly and was able to communicate and work well with others. Then I realized I'm a dumbass who never learned to appreciate the parts of myself that help others figure out their homework. They expect you to be good at everything, to understand everything perfectly, to get the best grades at your exams. So when you say, teacher, I don't understand, all the kids look at you and they start whispering, wow, she didn't understand, it's a miracle. It means I'm smarter than her. So you just don't ask and investigate by your own. At the family dinner, it's, oh, why don't you ask her? She's smart. Or even they tell you, don't you want to learn Japanese, Chinese, French, and other languages? I mean, you would do it easy. Yes, Aunt Karen, but I'm not interested in Japanese. It's really easy for school to become outright boring when the allocated time to finish an in-class assignment is 45 minutes, but you finish it in 20. You now have 25 minutes in which to do absolutely nothing. I usually just doodle and mess around, so it's not as bad for me, but I imagine that others would find it obnoxious having to wait 25 minutes to do stuff other than just sit there. My parents started me a year earlier in school. Being the youngest boy in your class sucks. Please do not start your kids in school early. Intellect and maturity are different and making friends in school is extremely important. Just because you're good at taking tests does not mean you'll excel in the workforce. There are so many soft skills you need that aren't testable. Also, smart subjects don't necessarily convert to big bucks. School slash college friends, my family, and myself are surprised that I have a chemistry PhD and a very average salary. I felt the need to keep control of myself, so getting drunk held no appeal. I also argued a lot with the biased treatment my brother and other boys got. Boys and girls being treated equally, yeah, not normal where I grew up. And I hated being treated differently when I dressed up, aka looked classically feminine. So I didn't. So I got treated as different. It was hard to feel that way. It made me feel an outsider who couldn't be accepted because I logically found no reason I should be treated as less. I'm very glad I found somewhere I'm accepted for who I am rather than what I am. People sometimes ask me things that are theoretically within my sphere of knowledge, 
but in reality are just outside of it. For example, my friend is a streamer and he often asks me how to set up his Streamlabs. I know nothing about Streamlabs, but I suppose that since I specialize in computer stuff and he's seen me use applications like Visual Studio or Unity, that I therefore must adapt in Streamlabs because that's totally the same thing. How your integrity is constantly challenged by others who want to freeload off of our hard work and how you are shunned if you try to maintain your integrity in this respect. I used to think that the people that wanted to cheat off me are not really my friends, but literally everyone wants to cheat off you. Don't get this wrong, but sometimes it's hard to handle other people's frustrations when they're not as quick as you in some things. For example, I read pretty quickly, but my girlfriend doesn't, and she's instantly annoyed when we read something together. This extends to some other things. Also, pressuring yourself because you're used to getting everything right first try. Especially sucks with things not really based on intelligence, like music or sports. I was pegged as a smart kid in my family growing up. Living up to that sort of pressure, when I failed, I felt it so much more. I also am very type A personality and developed a serious case of OCD as the years went on to deal with anxiety and needing everything not just perfect, but unattainably perfect. For that reason, I never labeled my children as one thing or another, and allowed them to define their success, and they are much more well-rounded than I ever was. I'm not all that smart. People just think that I am for some reason. I'm passionate about the material I'm learning, and put in a decent amount of work. So I guess that's why people think I'm the smart kid. It is so fucking difficult to maintain the grades that I have. And every time a professor tries to nominate me for another academic award or whatever, that's just more pressure and more expectations to live up to. Eventually, you'll reach a phase of life where there's actually a challenge and you have to put in real effort. You might not even succeed. If you never experienced this in your earlier years, you're not well equipped if it first happens in adulthood. This leads to some pretty frequent mental health issues in competitive colleges and careers. Later in life, you end up coming off as a know-it-all. You end up amassing a collection of knowledge that you can't reasonably explain, having most people look at you weird. People don't understand that after a point, knowledge gain becomes somewhat exponential due to being able to connect new information with other information and making reasonable inferences. Loneliness from difficulty in finding people who can understand half of what you are saying, can keep up with whatever topics or projects you are working on, or just don't continually do stupid things. While not literal, it's like that episode of House MD, where there's this super 140 IQ genius trying to give himself brain damage with chemical abuse just to be able to tolerate being with someone average. And yes, using an example from a 20 year old show. C.2. Once you learn or see something that connects to other things, it has a hard time ever leaving your brain. School. It's too hard for the challenge kids but too easy for the really smart kids, so they end up not improving and wasting their talents. School benefits the average kid the most because it goes at a pace that they most likely can keep up with and learn new things while revisiting and overhauling previous topics. The smart kids end up breezing through school, so when something comes up that actually requires hard work and effort, they end up stuck. When your classmates think of you as a tutor, in elementary school, other kids used to ask me for help with assignments in class because I'd always finish first. At one point, I was running all over the classroom, like a mini teacher, helping multiple students. Of course, the actual teacher had no issue with this until my mom got wind of it and told her it had to stop. In high school, my friend who was a native Spanish speaker used to ask to copy my Spanish homework. Even in college, I had classmates who I wasn't even friends with ask for study guides. Once the study guide made its way around the class and I saw a guy who I had never spoken to before use it to cheat on an exam or if I could send my entire paper to them so they could use it as an example. People are always jealous of you and will pick on you because of that jealousy. Teachers even will get mad at you for knowing something they think you should not know or even knowing more than they do. It's hard to get a job sometimes because you are often more intelligent than your boss yet you have to take orders from them.